Live from the studios of Coefficient Media in downtown Jackson, Michigan, today's show is brought to you by the Jackson Workstation and GoToMeeting. Get, use the code podcast and uh, you can save some money and be really cool. GoToMeeting. <laughs> All right, folks, this is the Android App Show, episode number 91. Uh, today we're going to be talking some more about Jelly Bean. In fact, we have some uh, demonstrations to show you on a, a phone and tablet here. It's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, it will. Welcome to the Android App Show. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is right. the Android App Show. Yeah, I have to eat some greens because I've been eating so many jelly beans. Oh, on the sugar hide. That's no weird, return. man. That's actually not real. <laughs> I know I taste it. Just plastic. kidding, it's real. This uh, this whole show is real. It tastes like plastic and dust. Mmm. And hurt. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna talk about a lot of stuff today. Um, it's a little different. It's a little different show today. We're not gonna be actually talking about individual apps. No, no, we're talking about the, the experience around the apps. Yeah. Um, Inspiration. We got a lot to talk about. We have some reviews. We we mentioned it a little bit on the last show. We talked about some of the features, some of the, like the butter stuff. Yeah, and Project the, Butter, speeding it up and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've got uh, like a much more in depth, uh, like trying. I try to condense it and include uh, you know all the good things you need to know in one show. Yeah. So before we get to it though. Oh yeah. Let's talk about the people that are paying the bills today. That's GoToMeeting.com. Yep. Uh, GoToMeeting, of course, is a collaboration software where you can share a desktop, share your uh, face with your customers, HD and create faces. a relationship with them that you just can't do over the phone. You can't right. do it with letters. You know, I like holding the letter up to the light and making sure it was signed by a real person. But there's no <laughs> doubt you're talking to a real person who you're talking to when you're working with your customers, working with your coworkers on GoToMeeting. Uh, and as awesome as it is, it does cost money. But I'm here to tell you that it's worth it, and we're going to give you 30 days for free to try it out uh, so you can convince yourself that it's worth it. Go to gotomeeting.com, enter the code podcast. You can help out the show, and you can help yourself out because, believe me, once you get hooked on GoToMeeting, uh, it's hard to go back to anything else. Yep, and not only that, they have an app for, like, you can use it on your computer. You can collaborate that way. You can use it on the iPad or your Android device. It's... It's really pretty cool that you can kind of do that online collaboration anywhere that you are at. So go to the meeting, go to meeting.com, click on the Try It Now button, and enter the promo code podcast for 30 days for free. Give it a try. So let's get into our little review here today. We're going to be talking about Jelly Bean. Yeah, uh, first I want to start on some of the features that uh, phones and tablets have in common before I show you the you know differentiations and the specializations and everything. Uh, so the first Be thing... Well, actually, before we get into that, is Jelly Bean really like... Is that a dessert? Or is uh, that more of a sweet yeah, that's snack? that's interesting, right? It's kind of a... It's, I don't know if it's like... I'm going to start calling this the Reagan of operating systems. <laughs> 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 Call it Android Reagan. Reagan smash. So, yeah, it's... Okay. I don't know. It's like a sweet... It's not even really a dessert. Uh -huh. I don't know. But uh, they've had other things that aren't necessarily desserts, right? Yeah, I mean, I really like honeycombs, but, you know, uh -oh. it's not really... That was never on my radar before it was an operating system. Jake, you, know? you like honeycomb? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you gotta do it! Cereal. This was before the show. Oh, oh yes. yes. <laughs> Come on, Jake. All right, all right. Honeycomb! Honeycomb! <laughs> all right, there it is. There you did it with your hands up honeycomb. last time. Oh, oh, is right? Jazz hands. <laughs> All right, I'm done. That's it. I'm spent. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, Back to the show. Back to the show. We're going to have to make that like a mascot <coughs> or something of the Jackson workstation here. You That's know, right. a giant, like, uh, get you a honeycomb thing to wear. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll wear it first just so you can wear it too. You know, I don't want to, I wouldn't make you do that. Like, I could make you do it. I mean, honeycomb was a cereal. Doesn't have to be a dessert. Jelly beans, a delicious snack that is sugary and 
That's true. Jams into your teeth. And mm -hmm. you maybe they're, maybe they're trying to get the uh, you know the president to switch over to Android instead of using iPads. In the way, it's, I don't know. That's a reach. That's, that's a bit of a reach. Swag. Uh, so we have uh, we have a couple things to show. We wanted to show you a little bit of the interface first, like an actual hands-on video about Google explaining some of the features. So if we could pull that video up, Corey, our wonderful producer, the video guy back there. Google Corey <coughs> is pick, pulling up a little video, it's a YouTube video, that Google made that explains Google Now. And it is their little way that they're doing their quick Instead searching Instead of having stuff. to sift through and organize all the information you need throughout your day, all that information is ready at the exact moment you actually need it. Introducing Google Now. Now with Android, one simple swipe gives you the information that is relevant to you right now. As you leave your house, Google Now is smart enough to check current traffic conditions and has prepared an alternate route for your commute. Google Now is always one step ahead, so you can feel more confident as you navigate your day. When you're at a subway station, Google Now can tell you what trains are next, find you interesting local places to eat. Is there a good Japanese noodle bar nearby? And when you're in a restaurant, your phone already has the best dishes listed for you. Google Now automatically keeps you updated on your favorite sports teams in real time, just in case you are curious about that no-hitter. With the predictive power of Now, you get just what you need to know right when you need it. Now, uh, if, if we can, we'll switch over here to uh, the phone device, also known as a phone, and, <laughs> and pull up Google Now. Uh, so you can see it's kind of like a, a basic Google web page with search, uh, with a little microphone there. And then it has these cards here that uh, give you helpful information like upcoming appointments you have, whether if I click show more cards, it'll come up uh, with my commute to work, how long it's going to take me, what the traffic's like, which is pretty handy. Uh, and local uh, businesses that you can check into on Google+. Uh, or not just check in, you could call them, you know, you could visit their websites because uh, if you click on more details, it's going to hop on over uh, someday to the Google Maps app. Load up their information and, uh, and then there you are. So if I pop back over here though, there's one interesting thing uh, that they've, they've updated from the voice app. You used to have to click stuff, uh, but now you just say Google. When you say Google, it's just supposed to work. Google. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. I see. Yeah, yeah right. <coughs> Is it supposed to rain tomorrow? Do do. Come on. It's freaking out on me. Will it rain tomorrow? This happens to us every time. We do it, like. You broke it. Oh, but look, look, that came up. It, it started saying this happens. Whenever we do a demonstration, it always freaks out. But it works right before the show, right? Always. Will it rain tomorrow? Will it rain tomorrow? Here's the forecast for Jackson. There we go. Usually it says something else though here. I'm, I'm, I'm like OCD stuck on this because will it rain tomorrow? See, it's not translating that stuff into words. There it goes. No, rain is not expected tomorrow in Jackson. The forecast for tomorrow is 95 degrees and mostly sunny. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's the good stuff. Um, that's that natural voice, you know, that sounds a lot better than Siri, uh, and you're still getting a lot of the same uh, performance and answers from it. Uh, but if you want to see some more examples, of course, we have this link to this video that we just showed you, uh, but we have another video uh, that we can show right now that has over 40 different uh, kinds of examples of things that you can use on Google now. Um, so we'll show you a couple of those. We'll show you parts of the video, but uh, go ahead and click in the what show notes if you want to see more.
When is sunrise in Tokyo? 4.29 a.m. What time zone is Amsterdam in? Amsterdam is in the Central European time. When was Canada Day? Canada Day was on Sunday, July 1st, 2012. When is Mother's Day in 2014? Mother's Day is on Sunday, May 11th, 2014. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, if, you know, pretty much anything that you can put into a Google box and they give you that short little thing at the top uh, that'll help you out, you know, instead of having to go through all the results. Uh, and they've sprinkled in a few other things too. Uh, that's what Google now is uh, as far as the voice searching function. Uh, very powerful, very great. Uh, and I'm excited to see where it goes from here. Uh, this the the thing that I kind of want to relate this to as well. Uh, and I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but this seems most useful for uh, Google Glass. You know, where you have this viewing interface where it tracks your eyes, and there it seems to me like they're trying to work out this system that predicts what you want to know, so that you can very easily access that information. And I think what we're seeing here is like the the kernel of uh, where Google Glass is going to end up taking us. Uh, this is the beginning, I think, of that sort of uh, uh, mobile interface that you can use without touches uh, and that weirdly anticipates what you want. That's, that's the thing that gets me. You know, I don't know. That could, that could kind of be creepy, I think, after a while. So uh, let's move on to the, the other big feature that we have here, the notification interface. Uh, there's been a huge expansion uh, and change of notifications in Android. Uh, I haven't seen anything like this since you know you could swipe to uh, dismiss single notifications in Ice Cream Sandwich. I mean, really, uh, it's kind of come a long way. Uh, so this this stuff kind of works with the the new APIs that have been exposed to developers. Uh, not everybody is going to have immediate access to these kind of changes because uh, they're not you know built into the apps yet. Um, but if I pull down the, the bar here, this is a reminder that I received for an event that, that I made. Now, it has the information that you want you know, to know about it, when it is, where it is, and the description. But it also has a snooze feature and an email guest uh, feature. So you know, if I'm going to be running late or if I'm almost there, I can click this and it'll automatically email Dave and say, be there in 10 minutes. Go ahead, start without me running just a couple minutes late, sorry I can't make it, we'll have to reschedule, or you know, whatever. So, let's see, I'll click on the, sorry I can't make it. It's gonna go in here, send the email right to Dave. Just click send, and it's done. It took all those steps out of the middle, uh, just from a simple shortcut up here. And you can still snooze it and do other things. <coughs> uh, but one of the changes they've made now, uh, you notice this is bigger than a standard notification entry. Uh, you take two fingers, and you can swipe that close uh, so that it's just a standard size. Two fingers, you can expand it right out. So see, if you get another thing like podcasts, uh, which was my reminder for coming here, I don't have a reminder, uh, or I mean, I don't have like guests and stuff like that, and this is an old entry, so there's nothing really to expand out. Um, but, and this, this is a text messaging uh, entry here. So I'm going to go ahead and send myself another text, though, uh, to show you uh, what what's changed with that because this is this is pretty big. If you're a user of Google Talk, uh, you're probably a little bit familiar with the interface I'm about to show you because uh, on Google Talk, when you get new messages from people, they uh, automatically stay in the same like sort of uh, grouping. So like it keeps the back and forth going. Uh, so if you know somebody sends you a message, you send back a message to them, it'll put that there. And instead of creating a whole new line for like a follow-up message you sent, it just puts it right below the message in like the same outline box. So if we can, we'll pop over here to the uh, stuff here. Now it shows I have three text messages uh, from you know Dave and everything too. So. It, it lists out all the people that I got them from. I can go in and read Dave's text. Uh, I'll leave mine unread there and send another text message back to myself. 
is the word just. And we'll see what happens when I get this notification here. So that it's a single, e yeah, even though it showed the other one is unread. So, and then I'll send do. So, somebody sent you a text message and then they had another follow up uh, to tell you. Instead of just uh, changing this to say two messages and not letting you read anything, which is exactly what this looks like right now, that's exactly how Android acted before. You could grab two finger zone, expand that out, and you see uh, all the text messages that are being sent through um, from that person. And it, as Dave demonstrated, when you get another uh, person, then it just condenses this down to and shows you a list of the people that have texted you and what the beginning of the message uh, looks like. So pretty cool stuff. This two finger swiping thing, I don't know if I'm 100% on board with it, um, but for the interface that they've come up with, it's uh, pretty effectual. I just wish they would have come up with something uh, a little bit easier to, uh, I don't know, the two finger thing on the phone, it just doesn't seem, I don't know, doesn't seem right. So uh, I guess like one of the last things here I wanna talk about are widgets. Uh, we covered this before, uh, but I wanted to you know show it off a little bit more again, uh, which is chasing widgets around a screen, you know, icons or whatever. Uh, this is something that really should have come out uh, as soon as they put widgets in the drawer, you know, and you could pull one out and put it on the desktop. There we go. They should have had this kind of stuff going on in Ice Cream Sandwich, um, but this is an awesome improvement. I think uh, it's one of those tweaks that makes the operating system much more easy uh, for non-super techie uh, super Android people, you know, like we are. It, chances are, if you're watching the show, you're a little bit up on Android more than the average bear. Uh, so this, I'm excited, you know, how awesome this makes my life. Uh, you can only imagine a regular user. So uh, essentially everything has uh, stayed the same uh, for phones and for tablets from Android 4.0 to 4.1. Uh, but Google has decided to assign these seven inch tablets, a sort of hybrid phone tablet interface, excuse me, <coughs> sorry, uh, rather than a full tablet interface. So it's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's not exactly a phone uh, interface. There are tablet like modifications to it, but they've stepped back and gone much more in the direction of uh, what they were doing with phones. So let me pull up some of the, uh, the things to show you on here. So on the tablet, the notification uh, shade stretches clear across the top. You got your time here with the battery and uh, signal strength. And when you get notifications, they build up across the left, just like they do on the phone. Uh, you know, but obviously a much wider interface. Uh, it used to be they were down here in Ice Cream Sandwich and in Honeycomb. And then these buttons down here on the bottom are centered. And instead of being over here on the left side, I don't like that uh, in this landscape mode. I feel like that's just, it's too far to reach for a home button, um, especially when the notification shade's over here on the left. Uh, so they, they've done like a similar dimming thing when you pull it down, um, but it doesn't, you notice it doesn't fill up the whole screen. So somebody has thought about that, that why center that, you know what I mean, when this is in landscape mode, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, we should put it over off to one side. So I'm kind of upset with them on that front. Uh, let me switch over to this Apex launcher. The built-in launcher doesn't work in Portrait right now in this hacked version, uh, which this is, by the way, a hacked version. In Portrait, though, they put the shade right down the middle. You can see all my finger stuff or whatever. Uh, so this is a lot more like a phone. But on the phone, it fills up the entire screen. There's no gaps from edge to edge. On the tablet, they put gaps in on the sides looks kind of like the iOS shade, right? Yeah. Uh, so it looks like on an iPad where they just got it floating there in the middle or whatever. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous, I think. Uh, if you're doing it like this, just fill it up, but whatever. Um, but this this is great. I mean, this having these buttons down here in the middle in portrait mode, which is how they're kind of, they're trying to market the Nexus tablet. <laughs> they're trying to market the Nexus tablet like this in portrait mode 
uh, and not in landscape. Up until this point, all the Android tablets have been pushed as landscape devices. Uh, so I don't know. I don't think there's enough brand like penetration out there where people are going to uh, turn on Google for doing this. In fact, it'll probably end up working in their uh, you know favor because people are used to seeing an iPad, oops, an iPad in portrait mode, and so they're going to think, okay, this is a little bit more like an iPad than I thought, and maybe they'll try it out. Uh, unfortunately, that's the way kind of you know things have to go. Uh, so let's see the the one thing I've seen here though on the between a phone and a tablet on the interface uh, when you pull down the notification shade there's an orientation lock on the tablet and there isn't one on the phone so I don't know they my tablet has an orientation lock button on the outside didn't really need it but uh, it's there anyway so uh, I don't know what would be better than this you know if I'm going to complain about it why not come up with something better. Well, I think that when you're talking about the portrait mode right here, uh, this is perfect, this is great. I like actually having this phone interface um, because specifically the buttons on the bottom are centered. Uh, I think that, that it just makes more sense. Uh, but I think that when you go into landscape mode like this, uh, this just doesn't stand, it doesn't stand up. You know, you need a switch uh, to like the larger uh, tablet interface, uh, which for, device is larger than seven inches I don't know exactly what the line is it's still gonna be this the same the ice cream sandwich stuff is gonna be moved over to this side uh, and not the ice cream sandwich the soft buttons on jelly bean are gonna be over here on the side and the app uh, the notification drawer is gonna be down here on the bottom um, but I think that in landscape mode it should just automatically switch you know when you have it in portrait sure the phone setting is fine uh, but landscape that's that's just horrible I mean reach and clear over here even with seven inches, you think it might be small enough, um, but no, I don't know. Uh, let's see, the other thing is like, I guess the last part I wanted to bring up on here, um, everything has been great. I'm really excited for the platform, uh, but when I try to install YouTube on the seven inch device, it says that it's not compatible with this device, YouTube. So like all my other Google apps worked fine, uh, but YouTube doesn't work on here. Now, uh, Dave and I talked about this before many shows ago. Uh, the problem with the YouTube app, it's been designed for these 10.1 inch screens perfectly. You know, it works great. Uh, but as soon as I opened it on Honeycomb on this device, it was very clear that everything was like scrunched up. It wasn't supposed to be this way. Freaked you out. couldn't see certain things. You couldn't even scroll to see the rest of the information. Uh, so there's obviously been some sort of limitation and they just let it go. Uh, but on this latest update, I don't know what it is if they've been able to single something out or whatever. Uh, but when I tried to install it, it just these seven-inch screens are not listed as compatible. Hopefully, that means they're coming out with a new version of YouTube that we just don't know about yet, or some, I don't know what the heck the magic is. Uh, but the point I'd like to make is that if Google has messed up on this, if Google can't keep it together with the different screen sizes and everything in the new versions of the operating system, how do they expect developers to keep up on it? You know, that's, it's kind of crazy. You know, YouTube works one day and then, you know, it works on this just fine if I use ice cream sandwich. Uh, but as soon as I update to Jelly Bean 4.1, YouTube doesn't work at all. So it doesn't even install. That's crazy. So, and you're, you're embarrassing me in front of Dave, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. The iOS stuff just works. And uh, yeah, it's an embarrassment. It is. So, uh, but that's every. I think that's everything that I wanted to cover. Cool. Uh, for ice cream sandwich. Sweet. So, we'll have some some app reviews and stuff next week, right, Dave? Yeah. And uh, I don't know. We can give the a little bit of the the rundown, right? If you want some more of these shows, or you want to find out more information about us and the things we do on here. Uh, go to the AndroidAppShow.com. Also, don't forget to click on the download our app button. That's right, yep. there's Dave. Click on the download our app button because we have an Android app now that works on phones, tablets, Google TV. You can watch all this content. You can read all the show notes. You can click all the links. You can install stuff directly on your device that you know that you're using to watch the show. Then you can click on the link to install the app that you just saw. It's amazing, people. Uh, but Beyond that, we have Facebook, 
Yeah. We have Twitters. Let us know if you like this new interview s or the new app display setup thing here we're trying out. We're trying a different, a little yeah. bit of a different approach. Don't know if it works yet. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. I think we need more cameras. I know. We've, we, we need to place cameras in weird <coughs> spots like this just so that we can impromptu like, change. Like, I love camera the five. shot, though. Well, we're going <laughs> to need more inputs. Yeah. More cameras. Yeah. We'll Maybe just do, like, we'll do crazy though. camera setups for different shows. Mm -hmm. Just mix it up. Floating camera. Or like. get him to produce and then somehow get a long cable to work and then I'll handhold. Yeah. Yeah. There's we'll no handholding here, man. We're, we're all grown ups. No handholding? <laughs> I'm not your girlfriend. It, I don't know if the mic does the mic catch that. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Good. That mic's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So thanks everybody for uh, watching the show, and we'll be back next week. There I am. I'm little. Look at how little I am. <laughs> yeah. It's a habit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Florenzis, right? And there's even a fade to black button that says BLK.